Hey, everybody. Um, I want to run through our assignment today because it's a little confusing, but I just want to make sure that I get the instructions out there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to be going to um, footprintcalculator.org. And uh, I have shared with you this slideshow, my carbon footprint, how much am I responsible for? And what we're going to look at today is how many Earths it would take for everyone to survive, everyone on the Earth, all seven and a half billion of us, if we all lived exactly the way you live right now. And we're going to measure how much carbon you are responsible for to put in the atmosphere. Um, and so uh, you're going to start by going to this footprint calculator website, and then you're going to follow the directions to calculate your footprint, and you're going to take screenshots of each page as you finish. Um, and then you're going to paste those screenshots into the slideshow below one picture on each slide as you keep adding them on to the end. And so I'll demonstrate. Um, so what is your ecological footprint? How many planets do we need if everybody lives like you? And when is your personal overshoot day? Meaning when would the world run out of resources if everyone lived your life? So we're going to take the first step here and you'll have to sign in with your account. I think you might have to create an account. I'm not sure. But you start at the beginning and it says food. How often do you eat animal based products like beef, pork, chicken, fish, eggs and dairy products? And so the simple way is to slide this slider here and go from never to very often. And it says I eat meat daily or <clears throat> but a number of the slides have this link here that says add details to improve accuracy. I want you to add those details. And then I want to think about how often do you eat beef or lamb? Is it nearly every day? Is it uh, nearly every meal? Once every few weeks? Once or twice a week? I probably do a hamburger like once or twice a week. Um, pork? My wife doesn't like pork. I love pork, but my wife doesn't like it, so we never eat it. I eat chicken probably nearly every day. It's not every meal, but I almost every day I have some... I hate fish and shellfish, so I'm going to never, and I have cheese on everything. Um, so we're going to turn that up. And you know what? Frisky fries. I have pulled pork frisky fries once or twice a week. Um, and so then I'm going to save this. Um, now, what I'm going to ask you to do is, we're, uh, I forgot this, when you're on this page and you have all this here, I want you to hit control and the button just above the six, the six actually has a little up arrow on it that points right at the button. It's a little square with two lines to the right of it. You're going to press those two buttons and it's going to take a screenshot. It's been copied to my clipboard as soon as I take it. So I can come right back over to my slideshow, open a new slide and just control V and paste it right in there. And now I've got that picture from my slide. And that's really important because we're going to come back and analyze this later. I'm going to go back to my footprint calculator. I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to go to the next slide. And I'm going to continue this. How much of the food that you eat is unprocessed, unpackaged, or locally grown? Uh, this is a tricky one, but add details to improve accuracy. So how much of your diet is fresh, unpackaged foods? I do eat a fair amount of produce but my meat is even packaged, the, um, you know, how much of my stuff is like cereal or boxes or cans, some kind of food that's put together in a box. Um, I would say the fresh unpackaged stuff that I eat, I mean, even the meat in the meat department and stuff at the grocery store, that probably is still counted as fresh. It would be like if you bought like the pre-season sealed in a bag ribs or something, those would be those would be on uh, packaged foods. Um, I would say probably maybe like half and that's I'd say 40 percent. It's probably not as high as I think it is. And how much of it's locally grown or produced within 200 miles? 200 miles is pretty far. Um, I do pay attention a little bit but probably not more than a third. I mean, even the stuff that I eat that's 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 fresh is from, you know, Chile or Paraguay or something. So like, I've definitely, I eat a lot of foreign foods too. So we'll save that. Oh, I forgot. We want to come back and I want to do control and that button above the six to take a screenshot. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to dump this into the next slide. So we want to make sure we do that every time um, so that I can paste this in here because I want to see those numbers because we're going to come back to them later. Um, and you don't want to have to fill in this whole thing again. And so you're going to continue on like this till we get to the end. Um, which housing type best describes your home? Freestanding with no running water, 
freestanding with running water? Is it a multi-story apartment building, a duplex row house or building that's like two or three homes side by side that are all connected? Or is it a large uh, apartment building or is it a luxury condominium? Um, uh, uh, condominium would be like a, a place inside a building. Like maybe there's 20 or 30 of these units in one big long stretch, um, but they're really nice. It's got room out back and you might have two or three bedrooms and they're fairly large and spacious. Um, mine is a freestanding house with running water. It's all by itself, just a house. And then again, I'm going to, there's no way to add details here. So I'm just going to hit control on that button again. And I'm going to keep doing that um, and adding them into my slideshow as I go. So um, I'm going to skip ahead to a couple of slides that need a little bit of explanation. My house is constructed with wood. How many people? What's the size? Um, oh, I should go back to that. Um, uh, square footage is a little tricky to calculate. Um, I'll put some notes in the assignment for that. Um, and, uh, but generally speaking, um, a 1,200 square foot is a large two bedroom. So you can kind of like go from there. Um, I, think, I think my house is 1,400, I think. And there are four of us that live in that house. And then I keep on going. Um, and so uh, I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to skip these. Um, what percentage of your energy comes from renewable? In Rhode Island, it's 4%. Just 4% of our energy comes from renewable sources. And then uh, trash, and again, add accuracy. When you get to these, how far do you travel by car or motorcycle each week? I'd like you to go to Google Maps and try to figure out, and on average, how far do you travel by car? If I go to Google Maps, oh, I'm not going to do that. It'll tell me where I live. I'll tell you what, I'll do it from my last location. Um, I'm going to go to uh, Google Maps, and I'm going to look up where I live. And so search Google Maps for the zoo. I live in the zoo. And so I'm going to go from the uh, Roger Williams Park Zoo. And then I'm going to get directions to 150 um, Washington Street in Providence. And that is uh, five miles one way. I go twice a week, twice a day. So that's 10 miles every day, five days a week. That's 50 miles. So I'm going to go back to my calculator. I go about 50 miles, uh, whoop, 50 miles right there every week. Now I'm going to add another stuff though. I take trips to my in-laws once a month. So I'm going to have to cut that down and, you know, figure out how about how far you go. Just you know, a, a sort of, you know, and figure out how far you go by car or motorcycle. And then we move on. Um, what's the fuel economy of the vehicle you use most often? Again, I'm going to have to go to Google for this. I'm going to look up my car. I have a 2012 Ford Fusion. And it says that my uh, oh, miles per gallon and I'm going to look, I get 23 city, 33 highway. We'll go in the middle and say 28. So my car gets 28 miles to the gallon. It's down here on the bottom. And I don't drive a motorcycle, so that's fine. And then you keep going, okay? And so when you get to the end of this, um, you get to review your results. Now, according to this, I would need 2.7 earths to survive for everyone to live my life. Um, and so we are going to take a picture of this screen and I'll paste, paste that in here. And then I'm going to go to see details. And this is where I really want to take some pictures. I want these numbers here. So I'm going to take a picture of this and, uh, this only copies it to my clipboard. Uh, I don't know if I get it in a, it must be in a folder. Um, and then how do you feel? Oh, that's interesting. This wasn't here last time I did it. So how do you feel? I feel, well, you know what? I'm not going to answer that right now. You tell me how you feel. And then explore your data. You can take a look at how your results compare to people in other countries. Um, and then uh, solutions. How can we uh, make this better? So what I'm really interested in here 
cusp is the results of part one. I want this. And where's the rest of your data? I used to give you numbers here. Ah, I see. You have to scroll over them to get the numbers. So what I'll do is um, I'll have this filled out into a worksheet. So you'll have to um, copy these numbers down into a uh, into the slides here, um, and we will insert a table. And uh, this table will be completed, but it'll just say, um, you know, how much of it is by land type and by consumption category. And I'll have all of this information room for this to be uh, counted in your slideshow at the end. All right. So uh, that should cover us. Um, thanks for listening to this.